Hi everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I want to go over quite an interesting technique here uh, that can use DAX really effectively. So I had a scenario internally where we were running some analysis um, and I, I needed to work out, and it was to do, it was actually to do with emails, um, how many um, emails we receive on a day and then I wanted to compare on a monthly basis. But I wanted to compare a current month to the best month before, right? And so what you've got there is you've got a data coming in every day, so you've got a dynamic um, data set coming in on a current month, but then you want to always um, compare it to whatever your best month was, so you can track how you're going versus your best month, okay? And so what I did is I translated this into a, a demo here that I want to run um, through today and work through with you how I actually went about this because there's a lot of tricks and tips here around how to utilize um, DAX in a, in, a, in a really effective way. Okay, so what I've done is I've set up my, let's have a look at this table down below. Well, actually, I'll show you the functionality first. So when I click through here, you'll see that what my in my cumulative totals, I've got my best month here and it stays static, right? It always stays the same because my best month in this particular data is January 2015 and I'll show you how I work that out in a second. But what I can do here is I can clip through to any month and I can sort of see how I performed versus that best month, okay? So the first thing that you need to do is you need to obviously set up your 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 calculation, your comparison calculation, okay? So, and this is this is the easy part. This is, you know, I'm just basically clicking through and you'll see here that my my context in this particular table is changing and, and the context in the page is changing as I select different um, things in the filter here. And that is obviously the key. Context is key, right? Understanding what is the context of the calculation. In this particular case, it's July 2016. Okay, so July 2016. And I'm just calculating up my sales, which is a very simple sum of the revenue column. And then I'm using the cumulative sales pattern um, or cumulative pattern, and you'll see here a very common pattern um, that can be just reused over and over again. And you'll see here that I'm using all selected so that it always starts out at the beginning of my context and my selected context. So you see here it's 77, then I add 136, I add 223,000, and then it just accumulates it up. Okay, so I've got that calculation, and you see here that it's the lighter blue line, and it's always changing every time I change the filters here. Okay, now. I want to compare this to the best. Okay, so what do I what do I do first? And this is this is all to do with uh, the way I calculate these things and the way I sort of figure out how these actually work. Like a, a lot of times, like I don't I don't figure these out straight away, right? Like no one does. Um, if you're, you you know, if you want to try and find something, there's always some experimentation, there's iteration, um, but there's this measure branching methodology that I use all the time, where I just like do it bit by bit and I branch from one measure to the next, okay? And so the first thing I need to work out is I need to work out, okay, what is my best sale month, right? Okay, because what I ultimately wanna do is I'm gonna feed in the data points from this month into my next calculation, which is gonna work out the sales on every unique day of that month, okay? And so what I've done here, let's have a look at, um, at this part of the for formula first, okay? So what you can do within the formula with using max x and iterating function is you can actually return a text value but what you need to do is you need to obviously isolate one result formulas can't return say two values in a result uh, two text values they can only return one if you, if you do more than one it's going to return an error so if you go top in one that's only going to create a table of one row or one value okay and so all i've tried to do here is i've tried to create a table of all of my month and years which is basically this next to all of those month and years i've worked out what are the total sales for those particular um those particular months right then the top end is going to rank them so that i get my highest month by sales up the top and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to return i want to return the actual name of that particular month Okay, and that's what MaxX does. Now, the one other thing I need to do here, and this is really relevant for this calculation when I put it in this table, is if I want to see what the best month is, or if I want the best month to be on every single day here, then what I need to do is I also need to remove the context of dates coming from here. Okay, 
So we basically are disregarding any context coming from dates here, and then we're isolating the top month, and then just putting that top month on every single row here, top month and year on every single row. And you'll see why I've done that in, in, in a second. Okay, so that's the first stage. The second stage is, okay, well, how do we work out the sales on each of those days, right? Because maybe we wanna compare on a, on a daily um, time frame what the um, difference was in sales one um, month to another month, right? And so what I do, what I did here was this. Okay, so I really used variables effectively here to really lay it out and try and make it as easy as possible. So what I did was I used that calculation we just created, that best sales month, and because it's on every single row here, I can extract the information from that particular result. And I, I'm going to extract the month. I'm going to extract the year, and then I'm also going to work out what the result is on each day, right? So if this is going to be one, two, three, four, what, what what the day actually is, and I've done, I've just used the function day and gone selected value date, which is going to return this particular date, right? Then I can set up the actual date that we need to go and choose from, and then inside of here, I've just done a simple calc where I've placed a filter on the date, so I can find what the actual sale was on in, in this particular case, the first the first day of the best month. This is the second day of the best month, the third day of the best month, right? So that's how I get the sales from every single day. And what we what we could potentially do, so I'm, I'll just I'll just do this on the fly. What we could also do here is we could we could compare this daily, right? Obviously, I haven't done that because I've, I've done it cumulatively because that's the best way to showcase different trends. But if I really wanted to, I could also do this where we create a visualization like this where we compare. Um, we probably want that one where we compare daily results, right? So that's that's another option as well. But in this particular case, I'll just see, put this down here somewhere. In this particular case, when you're trying to look at things over time, like trends over time, cumulative totals are always the best thing to do. Okay, so then the last thing we need to do, I guess, here is we've got our sales from the best month on every single day now, right? And what we need to do here is we need to calculate what the cumulative is of that. Now, we need to use a little trick here. We can't actually just use um, the cumulative sales pattern in this particular case. We need to use a different pattern um, that where we create a, a virtual table of these results. What happens is that when you place this inside of the formula pattern, it just goes haywire. And so what you've got to do is this. I'll show you. So, and this is a, this is actually a quite a common pattern, especially if you're creating a, um, a cumulative total of a more complex number, not just like from a simple core measure. And so what I've done here is I've said, okay, well, instead of using that calculate and then filter, I've said sum x. Let's create a virtual table of all of these results. So what we do is we create a virtual table of just this column and this column here. We basically create that virtually, okay? Then um, inside of that, we are then going to use um, is the date less than or equal to the current date? So is this date, say, say we're on this result here, we need to work out all of the dates which are less than and equal to the 5th of, 5th of April, right? Um, yeah, but, but it would actually be the fifth, the, the fifth, the fifth of Jan, twenty fifteen, in, in in theory. But what we're doing is we've just we've just isolated this column and this particular column, got it into a virtual table, and then we're running calculations over that virtual table. And then at the end of of that calculation, this we're iterating through at every single result here. We're iterating through this virtual table, ca accumulating results as we go, and then we're calculating up the ultimate end result using this best in sales month down here within the SumX function. So it really shows you the extension of iterating functions here. Okay, and so now I have this best month in a very like obviously this is January 2015, right? These are results have been pulled into a totally different context here. This context changes just by clicking around here, right? But these results always stay the same because they're jumping back to the um, dates that we have specified. And then that cumulative total is happening off the back of it. And then you could obviously go further. You could you could do the difference um, very easily from here. So maybe maybe we'll just do that on the fly just to just to finish off. So I could create another insight here, which might be difference from best month or something like that. Um, I usually like to use capitals from best month. And then all I need to do here is go best month minus cumulative sales. Go enter. So again, I'm branching, right? Measure branching. It's the absolute key. And then I can come in here, copy this, and sub this in. 
And so now we can quickly identify how we are actually tracking on any particular time frame. So I can I can get rid of this down the bottom here. I'll just make this a bit smaller. And I could click around and, and, and I know this isn't the current date, but it, it would be exactly the same co calculation. This is just, um, I'm just showing you how you can create something a bit more flexible, but you can see over time how we have tracked versus the best month. Pretty cool, right? So, okay, so I think that's all I wanted to show today. That was, um, you know, that was just a, a really interesting um, technique that, that I had to use myself for some calculations that, that we were doing internally. And I uh, definitely thought this was worth creating a tutorial. So hopefully you enjoy reviewing these techniques. Um, you know, there's there was a lot in there with um, some of the best practices around uh, using DAX, etc. So um, you know, hopefully you got a lot out of it. Okay, I'm going to round things off. Thanks for tuning in. I look forward to next time. See ya. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.